And with our first game of the day from the 2018 Isle of Man International, we have many people's pre-tournament pick as the favorite to win it all. Did you know that? No. Yeah, a, lo a lot of people. Extremely surprised. A lot of people taking you, but I have a question for you. The first round of these types of open events, where it's a little bit, got to be a little bit uncomfortable, or maybe maybe for the top players who are very used to knowing their pairings and, and sort of closed elite events. Do you get do you get the first round nerves that every chess player can relate to because you don't know who you're going to play, or is it not something that a guy like you gets nervous anymore? I knew my pairing. You knew your pairing, but not yeah. but not till a couple hours before the round. Well, I went around eleven after breakfast. Yeah. And I uh, did, so did you prepare then for your opponent? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So so it's uh, not something that you know the open format of it being a little more a little more options of who you might play. Not something that throws off preparation at all. Well, I mean, I didn't really prepare deeply, but uh, I knew uh, what my opponent plays with white. Okay. And I knew his games with black. More or less, I knew his style. Right. So. It's not that you're preparing some certain novelty or an opening, but you need to be comfortable. You need right. to know your opponent's style. That's normally important. Right. So focusing on kind of the profile of who you're playing uh -huh. work because it's not somebody you played a million times where you're more focused on the hardcore novelty. Here mm -hmm. you're more focused on trying to get a profile of the type of player you're about to face. Yeah. Okay. Uh, normally you determine it by seeing your opponent's uh, openings. I mean, my opponent was playing the Sicilian and uh, Grunfeld. Mm -hmm. Normally, that tells about him that he's a tactical player. Right. So, therefore, yeah. I uh, thought that I need to calculate a lot and make sure I don't get lured into unwanted okay. territories. And you were ready for that. You said Sicilian or Grunfeld, and that's what we mm -hmm. had, right? So, he went so, with the yeah. Shimonov. Okay. Is this something you expected, or I also looked at some uh, e four e five because okay. he, he had some games. Got it. But uh, yeah, I kind of analyzed this a little bit. So bishop, this is how black normally plays. D six. Yeah. Some people also play h five. Okay. This is very interesting, but I like to be white. You like to be white in both lines, h five and d six. D6 is is very solid. It's the best move, I think. Okay. So, castle, bishop d7. Yep. So, basically, black is uh, he's not developing his pieces uh, early on not to get into uh, some unwanted knight d5. Mm -hmm. So, he keeps the guys there. And uh, his next move would be bishop e 7 because c, queen h4, meets with h5. Ah. Takes bishop f6. Queen is trapped. Very yes. nice. Okay. I mean, not immediately. When, whenever I take Right. Right. Uh, so, and here I played this, I think I looked at this, maybe not here, but I thought this interesting. Did you get a feeling that that maybe surprised him a little bit, not the most common move? Yeah. Okay. But I didn't remember exactly how black should play in this position. So, I was thinking maybe rook c8. Yeah. But anyway, maybe I would do the same. Same idea. It's hard to tell. It has to be analyzed. And so you're not worried about this pawn falling in lines with 19. It's very principal. This, right. uh, sorry, nope. generally this whole position. Right. So black is a pawn up, but uh, at some moment his pieces are a bit wobbly. So okay. knight f6, queen d2, then rook to c1. Am I in time to create some play? For example, I was thinking about it. For example, queen c8, yep. rook c1, queen b or queen d8, whatever you do, and then some nice b3. Okay. What I'm basically trying to do, maybe take rook c1, bishop b6. Long-term pressure compensation. K kind of, or knight a5, e5. Ah, okay. Or knight a5, knight c4, I don't know. It's a okay. uh, it's type of a position that uh, you have to analyze to understand. Because right. so, so he played knight f6, right. c4. And if, here as well, he should take the pawn, because if he allows me to plant uh, this guy here, right, uh, then I own the center. And what happened in the game? You established a mm -hmm. comfortable Maroxy bind. And he cannot really compromise this pawn by playing, for example, uh, bishop e7, right. somewhere playing b5, right. because I always have these e5 tricks, and also most of the time this b5 is in my favor. Right. Because there are ideas where I can plant the bishop on b4, 
you know, or uh, even if you manage to get everything right, this this pawn is hanging in Weak. many lines. Yeah. yeah. If b5 is only good for black when he's fully prepared for right. it. Right, traditional accelerated dragon, Maroxy bind, whereas here, b5, you might even just have the two on one in game advantage in a lot of those positions. Okay. Yeah. So. So he didn't take it. You think that was partly the, the Levon Aronian factor? Playing, maybe perhaps, he was just nervous. Perhaps. And, okay. Well, it, the g6 is definitely a concession. Right. It doesn't. Look well, especially good. in a principled line where if the pawn is on e6, by definition, the bishop is going to be needed to guard the pawn, right? This mm -hmm. isn't a traditional dragon. So this was sort of a. But uh, it, it's not that this is so much better than g6 because it's still kind of unpleasant. Yeah, he's still going to have to do whether it's knight e8 or rook d8 to deal with what he had in the game. You won't be able to play b5 early on, and whenever I want, I can stop you. Okay, got it. So he played g6, and now... b3. Here comes the, the creeping so bishop, bishop to d6. Three. Rook d8 has to be played. Queen d2. He castled. Mm -hmm. And I played rook d1. I'm not sure my play is uh, super precise, but I felt the position is so pleasant for white. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require yeah, precision. So he took and took and played bishop to c8. c8. No, he played rook Yeah, he played rook e first. Okay. Yeah. Then I played rook c1. Yeah, because uh, when it comes to those uh, guys, hedgehog type of positions, as long as you protect from d5, you have the control. For mm -hmm. example, this looks very good. But then d5 comes and you never know, you know, he gets activated. Right. So... The main thing is if we trade everything here, black is coming out. Or knight d4. Or knight d4, okay. He I'm gets, looking at bishop g4. Yeah, he gets yeah. activity. Okay. So it's always very important to watch this d5. So rook c1 cannot be a bad move. So you went here. I couldn't really decide what should I do. Maybe this also looked good. I did two and something like this. Okay, just straightforward ganging just, up. But then I wasn't so sure if uh, everything works. We can see queen a5 and then maybe d5 will come. Right, and you don't want to play b4. That's a concession both because it blocks the bishop and the pawn. Yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe b4 is good, but I mean, it already c complicates the, the matters. Okay. I mean, it already gives him uh, a feel that he has achieved something. Right. In the in inducing of the, yeah. Which you want to avoid. You generally want your opponent to be completely depressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not yep. to have any yep. active moves. And yeah, see, for example, here, this might be good for white, but at the same time, uh, he feels that he has achieved right. and something. You're not interested in trades anyway, right? Especially if he's eliminating. I'll probably win some pawns somewhere, but yeah, uh, just psychologically, right? I'm not really containing his play. Got it. Therefore, I thought knight c2, bishop f8, and bishop b2. Yeah. So probably the best move for black is to play e5 somewhere. Just commit. Yeah. Allow the weakness and just. But yeah, right. it's just slightly worse. Right. But at the same time, it's psychologically unpleasant. Right. To do that. A, dif a difficult move to play without really feeling like you have to. Yeah. So he went here. I could also do this. But then I thought, you know, knight g4, takes, takes, queen c3, maybe some e5. Mm. I mean, white is clearly better. But uh, I think I'm, I'm giving away... S Too much. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm giving away some of my advantage. So I thought nice, knight e3 is a good move. b6, and then some bishop d4. So now this is not so good for him, because I have this very unpleasant move, knight uh, d5. Tempo. Right. So if he takes with the knight, I take, and he loses the pawn. And if he takes with the bishop, then this is, of course, a, a, yeah. hor a horrendous position. Right. Because... Rook c8, f3. Put the bishop on f1. Or h3, even better. <laughs> right. Yeah, this, yeah is, this is just... This is lost. Right. Positionally lost. So key, key uh -huh. that you, you play bishop d4 at the right time, and he can't, he can't just play the natural bishop b7. Oh, no, you didn't, actually. So you were thinking you, you could have gone for that line. No, I did that. You did? Okay. So he didn't play bishop b7. He played 
queen here. Right. And okay, I can force him already to play e5. But I thought, uh, you know, it wouldn't be in my style not to set up a little cheapo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> A, che a cheapo, but uh, but sound based on a couple of things. Because uh -huh. even if he doesn't blunder, you are relocating maybe the bishop at times. No, basically what I'm what I'm trying to say is, if I play like this, what are the probability that you're going to play bishop b7 here? What is the probability? It's not a big probability because anyway, I want to play f3. Right. So by playing bishop c3, I'm basically forcing you to play bishop b7. Right. Then I'll do this. And then f3, the important fact is that b5 is not good because of bishop a5. Okay. And then uh, I'm chasing the rook. Okay. Therefore, you probably have to do something like this. But uh, I can even play queen f2, then rook c2. It's a very, very pleasant position for white. Traditional squeeze for white. Yeah, because b5 always runs into this unpleasant okay. move. I also can do this, something this. Now I'm threatening knight d5, and king g7, I can set up another cheapo. Now knight f5 is a threat. Ah, okay. Takes queen d2. Okay. So, you know, when you have so many cheapos... Uh, it's hard to, <laughs> hard to resist. Well, also, <laughs> most likely that somebody falls for one, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, this was the whole plan. And he was also down on time. And, and then he blundered. He played this. Yep. And after e5, of course, it's gone. It's over. Bogus. And just the pin is just too much here for... I think he played this. I took... So here things. comes queen d8. Okay, here anything wins. So I didn't feel I have to play precise moves. Yeah. I'll just show... A matter of technique. Played queen a7. I think I played c6. Knight d5. I mean, there is nothing. There is no threat. Because I can always give the exchange. Right. For one of the bishops. If I'm too scared. So I took. Here. Yeah, I just want to play rook e1. So I think this would happen. And here is on. Why then? The, the because of rook d7. So super impressive. You would, uh, from my perspective, uh, uh, the the overall game was one where you have this positional bind that led to the tricks. So you call them cheapos, but obviously there were many of them, and easy easy for your opponent to go wrong. I guess maybe the biggest mistake or takeaway for Black would be kind of his unwillingness to, to go for e5, or he didn't want, was unwilling to change the structure and take on that unpleasant position. I think uh, the, the biggest mistake is not taking the pawn. It's early. one of these things, yeah. if, if you're tame early in the game, you're going to suffer, and then you're going right. to blame yourself. Right. And you're going to blunder while you're suffering, and, you know, things get worse. All right. Well... Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, we hope this is the start of, uh, of an amazing tournament for yourself. I know we surprised I you. I like the studio. I like yeah. coming here. So We thought uh, maybe we would have you know a different angle with the infinity mirror. We uh -huh. thought that might be kind of a sexy little plus, to, but we didn't, we didn't go with that. We kept the professional okay. look, so, but I appreciate that. This is normally where actors hang out while they're on stage at this, at this place. So. Great. Well, we're, again, we are actors. We way. are actors, right? Especially right now, and uh, we hope to uh, maybe have you again if, you, if the role continues. If you keep winning every game, maybe we'll have you again at some point here. So, anyway, okay, thank you, Levon. I, I take your word for it. Yep. All right.